Hey everybody, Wysel Walker here. In this video, we're going to go through the top five strategies used by PUBG pros in PCS1. These five tips aren't in any particular order and we do have an honourable mention at the end and hopefully you can use these like me and my squad have to try and improve your game during ranked games. So, the first one is vehicle use. After watching a lot of the games, I realised that most of the teams, when at all possible, all have a vehicle each when they travel. They don't all pile into one US Audacia to go somewhere. And then the reasons for this have become quite obvious the more you think about it. You're less likely to get the whole squad wiped out in one vehicle explosion, as there's more targets for the opponents to shoot, or, worst case scenario, you lose one player. You can use the vehicle as cover, if the ring moves into a field at the end, for example, so you make your own hard cover, which can be pretty useful. You can approach enemy occupied towns from multiple angles with the vehicles, which can cause confusion if there's anybody defending them. And like I said, we've tried this in my squad and we found some quite good success. So we've all, we haven't all been blown up in a car <laughs> recently, which is good. Uh, but also we've had a couple of rings that have gone into fields and we've just driven the cars in, made some barricades alongside rocks and trees, and then used smokes, smoke grenades to plug the gaps. And we've done quite well doing that. Uh, so it's definitely something I'd recommend checking out and uh, adding to your strategy list for your squad. The second one is weapon loadouts. Most of the players, if not all of them, uh, by the time mid to end game comes around in the uh, the PCS1, uh, the primary weapon was either a barrel or an M4, as they seem to be the most competitive full auto weapons. And also it's a similar in ranks as well. So one of the reasons that these are the most competitive weapons is because in ranked and competitions like this, a lot of the gunplay takes place at medium range, not always close range. Where So these guns can be sprayed at that range, but also control the recoil relatively easily whilst doing a decent amount of damage. And then more often than not, the secondary weapons were either a Mini-14, an SKS or an SLR. Bolt actions were used very occasionally uh, because... With a bolt action, you shoot one shot. If you don't hit them in the head, you've not took them down. And then they know where you are. Whereas a DMR, you can suppress the enemy if one of your teammates needs to get healed. Or you can quickly hit someone two or three times and then they've gone down. And it's also a lot easier to finish them when they've gone down as well. Where, like in ranked as well, where you need to finish off the guy to improve your team's position, but also get those points. In my squad, personally, most of the guys have started using DMRs at range, and we've found that, as a team, we've become far more effective at range, uh, possibly because of the fact we're just shooting more lead in a direction. So four guys shooting a DMR in a direction, you're putting out a lot more bullets than the occasional pop-off of a bolt action. Uh, so it's like, I might hit the guy, my teammate might hit him, and then the third teammate might hit him, and then he's downed, and then by the time you come around to the second round of shooting, you've actually finished him, and it, it can be quite useful. The third point is to do with utility use and how they manage the backpacks. So most players in the teams of the PTS-1 all carried at least four to five smoke grenades, and then one frag or one molly or two frags or two mollies. Now, the reason for this is because they can be used for so much many different things and gradually my squad started to use them more and more but you can use them when healing someone use them while looting a dead body if you need to you know top up on your loot like i was saying before in the final rings when we were using the vehicles you can create your own cover so sometimes you might be fighting a team in front of you shooting them and then bullets start coming in from the left you can whiz a load of smokes on the left to create like a, a barrier a visual barrier essentially which gives you time to either finish the first team you're fighting or maneuver your position to somewhere with better cover what we've also started doing in my squad even if it's a, a gunfight Sometimes we just throw down a couple of smokes to cause cover. You can run in and out of them. Uh, they lose track of you and it can make flanking around that much easier because they're distracted by the, the smokes. Uh, as well as that, smoke grenades are actually one of the lightest grenades to carry. So you can carry multiple pools of them without having to sacrifice on carrying meds or ammo. Uh, so yeah, definitely, definitely uh, look into investing in smoke grenades. It's, it, they're great. The next one 
the teams of the PTS1 almost always actively try to take compounds in the center of the, the zone. So after the first zone, and they'd looted their initial landing spots, they'd hightail it into the middle of the ring in the convoy of vehicles and try and choose a, a compound that's in the middle of the ring to increase the chance of them being in the next ring. Now, the reason they do this is because having a decent compound in the last couple of rings is so powerful because other players will be out in fields and stuff like with little to no cover. Whereas if you're in the buildings, even if you go down, you're likely to be able to crawl behind a wall or into the building and, and get healed. Uh, and as well, if they, even the teams, even if when they were going into the ring early doors, if they knew there was an enemy team in a compound, they would still try and push and take that compound because the benefit of having that late game was worth the risk. Now, personally, in my squad, we've not tried this too much yet, uh, but we have had experience in the past where if you're in a good compound in the last couple of rings, it gives you a very good uh, chance to win the game and it gives you a massive advantage. Uh, so definitely what we have started doing is looting a lot quicker and setting off in our vehicles to get centre. We've not necessarily gone for a compound right away, maybe just a looting spot on the way, uh, but it's something I think everybody could bring to the game. Uh, number five, knowing when to pull out of a fight to survive. So a lot of the times in the PCS one, the team doesn't always rock together as a four man. Sometimes they'll be split into two two, scouting different compounds, trying to decide where to work out, where to get the team in, in into a good spot. And sometimes this would obviously lead to engagements with other teams, either full teams or individuals doing the same thing. Now, what's key in competitive play and, and in PUBG ranks as well is if you're scouting or if you're trying to find a compound where to go to, and there's a full team on there, it's important when to know to pull out, save yourself to fight for another day. So when these guys get scared, if they get shot at, they'd almost always pull back, regroup with the team, and then they'd either advance or they'd go somewhere else. Now, sometimes they got killed before they managed to do this, but a lot of the time they would get back to the team. And it's obvious why they do this, because you deny the enemy a, a, an easy point on the kill on you, but also... The teams that tended to get to the last couple of rings and still had a four-man team did very well because in this kind of competitive game, if you've got a full four-man team at the end and it's a couple of ones and twos knocking about, you have such an advantage because you can just target a team at once uh, and just take them down super quick. And again, I think everybody would know that obviously the aim of the game is to survive to the end and win. So it's better to survive and fight later than get killed early on and not earn any points, especially when in the competition it's a point-based system. And then finally, we come to the honourable mention, and the honourable mention is landing zone familiarity. So most of the PCS1 teams landed in the same place on, on the two maps. So Team Liquid for Europe landed in Picardo almost every single game on Murma. Uh, a couple of times a team went with them and then ended up pulling out, but Team Liquid always went there, and the reason for that is they will have practiced a lot of the time. Will land Picardo, will land Picardo. They all have their individual buildings that they'll land at and then go through to loot really quickly. And then, so they've got that down to as speedy as possible. There's plenty of vehicle spawns there, which again is a key component of competitive play. But also, if another team does come and did try to push them, they're that familiar with the layouts of the buildings and the little side streets that you can easily get flanking manoeuvres and overcome that enemy. And again, in my squad, we do the same thing. Like, for example, on Erangel, one of our favourite places to land is the Sunken Town, the you know the one with all the water in. Uh, we all land there. We all have a certain building we land on, and we all go through a certain set of buildings. And once we've done that, we regroup, we try and find the vehicles, and we get going. Uh, and we have the same thing on the other maps as well. And I feel like having landing somewhere where you know is going to give you a better chance of surviving to that mid game if there are enemies there, just because you're that much more familiar than potentially the other guy in that area. Uh, so it's always something worth, worth thinking about. And that's it. That's the top five strategies used by the pros in PCS1 with also an honorable mention. Hope you found this video useful and hope you can implement some of these strategies into your own game. If you did, consider liking and subscribing to see more. Wookie out.